Hello, my friend. This is Clyde. Church ought to be top priority. Let me confess that this is a crazy topic, but I'm not discarding it. So let us be reckless or curious and pursue our conversation today using this weird topic. I feel in my spirit that somehow we are onto something significant. So let's get right into it. A house of worship was a critical piece of Jewish heritage. While they were on their journey to the promised land, they got specs from God about a tabernacle, a mobile place of worship. After they settled in Palestine or the promised land, they continued to worship around the tabernacle until David commissioned a temple which was built by his son Solomon. But there's something I want you to notice, something that David said. I rejoiced with those who said to me, let us go to the house of the Lord. Psalm 122 verse 1. Later in that same psalm, we read that the tribes would go up to praise the name of the Lord. David evidently enjoyed a worship experience at the tabernacle and especially when there was rich music. Then Solomon built this magnificent structure and it was all excitement. The grand opening lasted several days and the Jewish people, they were ecstatic. They now had a permanent place to go for worship and annual sacrifices and to pray. Well, come on over to more modern times. Remember that at the end of the day of Pentecost in Acts chapter 2, there was a total of about 3,120 converts and leaders in Jerusalem who had had unusual experiences that Sunday. People experienced the baptism of the Holy Spirit. One bold man preached a new and different sermon, and that accounted for 3,000 people who got saved that day. So what next? They devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and to fellowship, to the breaking of bread and to prayer, Acts 2 and verse 42. It was clear that a movement had started, and that movement was the early church. Over the next weeks leading into months, things got more organized. They started out meeting every day, and over time, church became a place where they would meet to learn what Jesus taught the disciples. When you read the 13 epistles that were ascribed to Paul, Nine of them were written to specific churches in major cities in the region around Jerusalem and Israel. And those epistles were read when the congregation got together. People, Peter also wrote two epistles that were read in different locations where churches would meet. John's epistles were meant for Christians. Then wherever the apostles or church leaders went, they would read these epistles because the sale of the word of God came later. So let us agree, church is a place where we interface with the word of God. This is the textbook that provides us with the teachings that have been preserved and form part of the Bible that we now know. Paul, in defense of the Bible and the public use of it, had this to say, all scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be complete, thoroughly equipped for every good work. 2 Timothy 3 verses 16 and 17. But is, all, is that all church is good for? Mm, let us see. The Old Testament teaches us a thing or two. In the Psalms, we find numerous songs that were sung in temple worship when the congregation was assembled. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise, Psalm 100 verse 4. Then the last of the Psalms, Psalm 150, opens up with a full-blown note of worship in the house of the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise God in his sanctuary. Praise him in his mighty heavens. Psalm 150 verse 1. The sanctuary was where they would meet and spend time in worship. 
Praising God in his mighty heavens could be a generous invitation for angels in heaven to join in the earth-led praise and worship. But I also believe that the writer is saying that the time of singing and worship was loud and bombastic and that loud rendition of each song went all the way to the heavens. Those early Jewish people were not polite in their worship. They sang loudly. They had numerous instruments. Worship was a big, exciting experience. Church is a great place where people get together and they sing and they make melody. They must have had songs written by numerous people. I cannot even imagine the melodious sounds every Sabbath as the pilgrims walked in a procession on their way to the temple. And once they got there, singers and musicians came together for a rich time of worship. Church is therefore a place where God's people come together and collectively offer psalms of worship and songs of praise and adoration to God. Church is a place of prayer. Solomon made that clear to God that people would come to this new temple to pray regularly. God, in his response to Solomon's solemn prayer, said that this place would be known as his sanctuary. Then he said if people would come to this place to repent and seek God in prayer, he would hear and forgive and heal their land. Second Chronicles 7 verse 14. Church is a house of prayer. Jesus made that very clear when he drove out the higglers and vendors out of the temple in Jerusalem. My house will be called a house of prayer, he said, but you are making it a den of thieves. Matthew 21 and verse 13. Finally, church shall be a place where church disciplined, church disciplined disorderly members in an orderly fashion. I say orderly. Because Paul warned, but everything should be done in a fitting and orderly manner. 1 Corinthians 14 and verse 10. And in an earlier chapter, Paul admonished them to settle matters between church members when they get together rather than ending up taking each other to the public courts. 1 Corinthians 6 verses 1 to 2. The COVID-19 pandemic was a challenge to Christian community 2020 into 2022. At, fir at first, churches had to stop meeting so as to contain this contagious disease. But they turned to online platform until the deadly plague had subsided. And since then, people have been making their way back to churches. And how does all this affect you? The Bible says that church should not be optional. It should be that place where members meet their pastors and fellow Christians to study the Bible, to worship, to have prayer, and to fellowship. Let us hold fast the confession of our hope without wavering. For he who promised is faithful. And let us consider one another in order to stir up love and good works, not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together, as is the manner of some, but exhorting one another and so much more as you see the day approaching. Hebrews 10 verses 23 to 25. Church is important to God, my friend, and it ought to be important to us. We should not treat it lightly. We should not make it optional. It should not be disregarded. God meets his people in church when we come together and when we come together as often as possible. That's how the early church in Acts functioned. My friend, make church top priority.